In this video, I go over wine, everything that is wine, how to install it, how wine bottles work, how to configure and modify the bottles, and how to install Windows applications. So this is one subject. I've seen a bunch of videos. I've gone over a lot of articles. And it's one that's just very hard to wrap your brain around. So I'm going to give a crack at this. And what we're going to be doing is creating wine bottles, managing wine bottles, modifying them so you can install certain things like DirectX and things like that to get custom applications working. I am going over installing an unsupported application in this that has a garbage rating on wine and what steps I take to actually get it working. Um, and then also I take an old guide, an old wine guide, like most guides online, you find about wine, how to get this certain application working, you go to do it and then you find out most of the commands don't work because it's been updated and many of the components no longer have, are there or the names have changed. I kind of walk you through how to adapt an old guide to be working on like a wine 4.0. And that's really important to know because many people just don't go over how wine works, how to use wine. And they say, hey, just use play on Linux, use Lutris, use all these other programs to manage your applications. And honestly, I love those programs and I highly recommend those. But Sometimes you just want to work on that one obscure application. Like I have some applications for my business that I have to do and I don't want to load up a VM every time to use that application. I know it'll probably work in one, but there's just no easy installer. So that's what this video is about, kind of getting at the core of wine, how to use it, how to just change and um, do all the things you want to do in wine. So with that said, let's get into it. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started here. I'm going to install a custom directory. By default, wine likes to use .wine, which hides your directory files. Now, DistroTube actually just had a wonderful video about how your home directory is just taken over by all these hidden folders with .dot in front of them. Um, I really check that out if you get a chance. He's a great uh, YouTuber. I really like a lot of his content. But for this video, I mainly uh, want to just create a folder called wine. So you just do make DR wine, and that's how I did this folder. So we're just gonna drop into that folder. And all I did was put an executable of the file we're gonna install right now. So the first thing we need to do is create a wine bottle. And I wanna put it inside this folder. So to do so, we're going to just do uh, wine arch equals win32 because we want it to be 32. By default, it always sets it to 64 bit, which doesn't have a lot of compatibility. So, when doing an uh, unsupported program in wine, you're going to want 32 bit most times. And then we set the actual prefix, which is the actual bottle itself. And I like to spell this out. You could do a PWD variable if you like, but for this, we're just going to go ahead and spell it out. And then we're gonna name this one Media Monkey, like that. And then what we need to do is launch into the config to go ahead and set this up. Uh, there's many different ways I could launch directly into the program, but for this, I like to just launch in the config to go ahead and just install and get that bottle set up. So from here, I don't really make any custom settings initially and just hit okay. So with this, when we do a listing again, you'll notice we now have the Media Monkey bottle set up. And once it's set up, make sure like any dependencies or packages are installed, obviously probably even prior to creating the bottle. So make sure you have Wine or Wine Devil installed and Wine Tricks from your package manager. So if you're a Debian based system, make sure you go into apt git and install those. Or if you're in Arch, make sure you open up your package manager like Pac-Man and install it there as well. So with those dependencies out of the way and our bottle set up, we need to actually install and create a lot of the actual packages that are gonna be installed. This is like Visual Basic, um, any Windows fonts, a lot of times those don't display it properly if you don't have them installed. So let's go ahead and launch into Wine Tricks and get those configured. 
So to really experience this, uh, usually there's guides out there saying, hey, install these commands. Well, this is an older guide I can already tell because it tells you to install Gecko, which is pretty much installed by default when setting up the wine bottle. Um, however, this is not correct syntax, such as uh, WSH is no longer 56, but 57 in wine tricks and some other things. So using this as a guide, let's flip back over to our terminal and let's just run wine tricks instead this time. So let's just do wine tricks. And we'll kind of pick out exactly what we need from wine tricks. Now, if you knew exactly and it was an up to date guide, we could just type all that in and it auto install. However, that's not the case here because this is an older guide from like three or four years ago and it's just no longer valid. So we'll select the default prefix because we've already set that. And then we need to actually install components, the very top option after selecting the default. And from here, we need to select the things that are in the actual guide. So uh, let's, let's take a look here. Um, I'm gonna flip back over to our old out of date guide and we need to get core fonts vc run six gecko which is already there vv6 run and wsh56 so that said let's flip back over and come down so the first one we're going to probably run across will be let's see i don't think core fonts is here that's going to be in the other menu so we'll come back and get that However, we will get our uh, VB6 run. That'll be the first thing, so we'll scroll all the way back down. VB6 run, and then the next one's gonna be the VC, oops, I want that one, VC run six. And those are both the same. And then the WSH57, there is no 56 because the script host was actually upgraded recently. So with that, that should get our base components installed for this wine bottle. Um, and we'll go ahead and hit install font as well and type core fonts. And this one usually spits out a lot of errors. These can safely be ignored. And if you kind of want to see what's going on in the background, you can also pull up uh, the terminal. So every time you do this, it'll actually say, hey, this was installed and it'll give you a good basis. So if this does error out or there is an issue, uh, just be sure to look at your terminal and you might get a hint in which you could Google if it's a complete like a hard error, uh, you could easily do that. So we'll go ahead and finish installing our core fonts here. Okay, with that done, we can just go ahead and hit cancel and cancel again. So now we've set up our wine bottle, we've installed all the dependencies inside the actual bottle or the emulated Windows environment to go ahead and launch this Media Monkey program, which is not uh, officially supported. So let's go ahead and launch into it. So to do this, instead of wine config or wine tricks, we just need wine. And then we need our executable, which would be the Media Monkey and underscore boom. So from here, you can see we're working in the directory with the executable and we can launch directly into it by typing all this. Just remember wine before the executable, that basically says here's the architecture, the prefix. And honestly, you don't even need the architecture on this one. It just went ahead and it's easier just to hit up and then modify the last command. Uh, but the prefix is already set for 32-bit. It won't change over to 64 or any of that nonsense. So with this, let's go ahead and launch our executable and see what we get. Um, we got our setup language, we'll hit okay. Pull this up and I'm on dual monitors and you see how it's kind of created this giant display and putting everything in the middle of the screen which we will need to fix this at the end here. So we're gonna go ahead and hit the full install. And just like that is installed. Now we can launch into this but I'm gonna guess we're gonna have problems with the display. Let's see what we get. All right, we're kind of cut in half. What I'm seeing on both my monitors, because I have a top and bottom, is I'm only seeing the top half. Now, it's all kinds of jacked up because this is, wow, there's so much going on. I have it full 36 inch, half on the bottom and half on the top. So let's see, I can drag this window over, but it's just not workable. If I go maximize it, um, let's see what happens. See, it just it's just a huge mess. So the display is all jacked up 
And there's no way to really fix that without just turning off a display and modifying my XOR config. Or if we want to do it a lot easier ways, just create a virtual desktop in Wine and then just run it from that. Since this is a media app, that would be the wisest thing to do and also the easiest thing. So this is still going. I just hit control C to cancel out. So we've installed the program, we've configured the wine bottle and we've installed the wine bottle. Now we need to fix how it launches so it launches properly. The easiest way to do that is actually modifying the shortcut. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut down to my big ultra wide down here and we're gonna do some changes on the actual shortcut itself. So to do this, um, we need to first go into our dot local uh, folder. So we're going to go up here, uh, local, and we're going to go applications and then kind of look to see if there's a certain application. It's usually under the wine folder programs. And as you see, here we go. We're, we're in business. Um, we're going to want, this is a readme. This is an uninstall, which I like to just get rid of these. Uh, Media Monkey on the web, which that's just a thing. And then this is the actual desktop. We want to modify this. So we're going to open with other other applications. I'm going to use Kate for my word editor. So we need to change the actual executable that it's executing to do it properly. And we have the prefix already set, which is good. We're doing wine. And then we need to change this to be Explorer, we're gonna launch Windows Explorer for a virtual desktop. Dash Unix is no longer a valid thing. And then we need to change all of this over to the actual, where the executable lies. So let's go back here and we're gonna go into our home directory and kind of check out where, what executable we wanted to actually launch into. Program files, Media Monkey, and let's pick out its executable, which is this guy right here, mediamonkey.exe. So we're gonna copy this directory so we don't have to type all that in. And this entire thing, we can ditch, we can actually delete. Now we want to set the desktop equals, and this after the equal sign is just something unique that you wouldn't use again. So I'm gonna do mm desktop basically media monkey desktop but i could type one two three four it doesn't really matter just something unique and then uh, i believe it's comma and then we want to set our resolution for this virtual desktop an 80 space and then where the actual executable lies so there's the directory and then media monkey.exe from here we should be good now, I like to do quotes on these long directories just in case there's a space in there. There isn't in this instance, but many people do have spaces like program files and things of that nature, which actually there is right there in the middle I'm looking at. So um, let's go ahead and save this and then we're gonna run it and see what we get. So file, save, and we're gonna close this out. And we can go ahead and close this out as well. And we're gonna go ahead and flip over to the start menu and launch this. Okay, so we're gonna start here on the widescreen. Go to the menu. Um, Wine by default creates shortcuts in here. I've noticed sometimes after I modify using an Explorer, these don't show up properly. And what I do is hit edit application and then just come into here and you can just like remove a quotation mark, add it back in, and then just hit OK. And it seems to update the actual configuration in the menu so you don't have to reboot. Um, so just a FYI. So let's go ahead and launch into this. Now this by default launches right here and looks pretty good, but um, let's see what happens when we actually get it in. Now sometimes you see artifacting, like this doesn't display quite right. And right now um, it's actually acting pretty good. But if that happens, just simply minimize and maximize again. It seems like that fixes a lot of things. Um, other kind of hints when using a virtual desktop like this, um, come up here and go no border. And from here, this would remove the actual window border when maximized. So very, very nice. Right now this is not maximized, but um, should I maximize, which I'll go ahead and drag this to the top monitor 
maximize it, and we'll flip to the top. So from here, you'll see kind of the view of it. Other things to note is this does use custom skinning and theming. So if you want to change this to, I would get rid of a lot of these custom themes. And sometimes if they use like arrow and some translucent effects, switching it over to a more legacy theme will definitely help you. Um, so you could easily do that for Media Monkey. But other than this, I mean, the software is completely operational. You can add and remove things. Just remember though, the C drive is down into that directory structure. So it's actually in that wine bottle. So when you install things using wine, it does drop it inside that bottle or container. So just important to know. And that was wine in all its glory. It's so great. I'm really happy I did this video because honestly, even going through it, there's certain aspects that I really wanted to kind of touch on and flush out just for myself. And I think making it in this format should help you. And I know it helped me as well just to kind of see how to properly manage wine because by default, wine does those dot wine and all the wine bottles and all that junk and then you have to constantly be going to your location to pull up that directory i like just creating that you know regular wine directory and then i can just always drill down and kind of see what wine bottles i have uh but you know this is just native usage of wine without all these extra applications installed and i hope you found it useful and if you like videos like this consider visiting me on patreon every dollar helps make more videos like this and i'd really appreciate it and with that said i'll see you in the next video